just an absence. How are you just an absence? And thank you very much for substituting. Um, decorations of peculiar interest, anybody? Uh, I don't have a pecuniary interest, but uh, I've met uh, the owner of 141 on Broadway twice in the last uh, two weeks uh, with regard to my council duties, uh, and in that time, the uh, uh, did speak to me about this. Uh, so I imagine it's best if I uh, don't speak and don't vote. Yes. Uh, one for one in Norway. I've arranged meetings uh, with the officers and the other side of the world. Thank you for that. Minister Bridges, please, can you create those, please? Yes? <laughs> Thank you. Um, for the public's interest, the way we operate is uh, an, op uh, an agenda item is presented by the officer. Um, we then give three minutes to each of the objectors wishing to speak and an equal amount of time to the agent on that particular um, um, item. And then it's over to members then. First of all, to ask questions and then to comment. And at the end of that, we will make a decision. Um, we've changed the order of the agenda tonight uh, to reflect the amount of interest in the chamber. So number five, again, item 141, Broadway is first. Uh, number nine for Westside Common um, is um, second, that's agenda item nine. And the Wellington Works is agenda item eight, third. And Durham Road, 36 Farm Road, number seven is fourth. And the Atkinson Morley site um, at proposal is actually being as well. Are you happy with that order? Okay, thank you. We do have quite a bit of information on 141 the Broadway in the modifications paper, which you will only have just received. And so in fairness to you, I'm going to allocate five minutes reading time so that you have a chance to digest that. And then we'll go to the officer for an introduction.
read your mind, or I can read quite easily. Adjacent office buildings, you'll see the side pictures 
um, fill in the levels and show you a spiking comparison to that. Um, just some further details they submitted in terms of banking screens. Uh, this plan doesn't come up too well, but what this does is show a comparison of the proposed elevations of the previously approved um, resolution grant commission committee of the previous scheme. Um, in red, is the outline of the previous scheme. Um, essentially, some key differences are outlined in the office of the report. So, what we have here is a, a visual aid that the applicants have submitted. So, there's been two previous applications on this site in terms of flatted development. Uh, the first um, went to, uh, was refused on, on design grounds and went to appeal. The inspector that was this design here, the inspector did not dismiss it on uh, design grounds, however, dismissed it on that of the site, section 163, security and affordable housing. Um, since then, uh, a 2016 application has come in, went to committee, and was, was granted that for 16 years, and that was for uh, a brick facade type building, um, similar um, to what's before you tonight, which is this building here, such as for some assistance, um, shown the proposal here against the uh, previous scheme, two schemes ago. Um, this is something I've submitted, which is a, a contextual area review plan just to show the proposal uh, in this context. Turn to some photographs. Uh, these photographs are slightly outdated because the, the Premier Inn building, which is here, has been um, some sites here. That's the adjacent office building, which has been noted in the, in, in the plans. Um, some building, it does set, set below the height of the adjacent office building. And again here. And some site further up on the road. Just showing this side here. That's from the side. Um, residential properties to the right of this picture um, and gardens as you go along. That's the, obviously the office building in the background and there's the start of the application site here. And again, just further up the road. Now, I remember you had a good chance to look through the modification sheet there. Um, so I won't go through that in, in, in detail. Um, overall, the proposal is considered to sit comfortably on the site, which will not cause harm to the character of the area or the surrounding community of residents. The scheme has followed two previous schemes. The current proposal provides for a better design, with lots of great external planning. Although the scheme will provide more flats than previous schemes, none of these must be secured as affordable housing. The application has been subject to valid bids reviewed by the council and the consultants who have confirmed that affordable housing can be secured on the site. Officers there recommend the Commission to grant the conditions and the legal agreement secured as the terms set out the agenda. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Um, we have a traffic light system here, so when it goes to amber, it means you have one minute left. It's easier for me if you recognise that, and um, when the red light comes on, if you could stop um, further speaking, please. Um, so our first speaker is Sarah Trump. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've, been, um, I've been talking to the planning officers for the past week or so about the elevations of this development. The last uh, correspondence I had was yesterday saying that they looked at it and they were happy with the proposed levels shown for the application building. The main differences between the two buildings is that the office building is 3.8 metres floor to ceiling heights and the proposed building is 3 metres floor to ceiling heights. Um, therefore, the proposed residential building would have shorter floor heights than the office building, just in case it's a bit confusing. The CIPD um, ground to first floor is not 3.8 metres, as the officer has said, and as is reported in the, in the officer's report. The, the floor to ceiling is, is 5.025 metres. Uh, I have it from the horse's mouth. I have contacted the CIPD. They have resent their, their drawings, and I believe that they have also contacted you on this issue. So, if the premise of this design is based on inaccurate uh, elevations, then that means that this 
proposal is going to be lower and higher than the CIPD than you propose. The officer also told me that um, the CIPD is 3.8 meters all the way through. That is not correct. And he also said that the residential, the proposed residential development is three meters all the way through. That again is not correct. You can just look at your, at the, at the drawings up there. It's three meters right up to the sixth floor and then it's 3.5 meters. The whole drawings is incorrect. So you will be deciding today on incorrect drawings. Um, that surely cannot be the right way to go forward in, in planning in Merton. However, I, I can see that you will vote on this and you probably will vote it through. Um, on design, the officer did mention the appeal. Um, the appeal was um, agreed based on, before the national planning um, framework was, was, um, was put through, it was revised. Um, it still is a very material consideration. The design is wholly unwilden. The, the building, the, the, the balcony is going to affect the CIPD. The applicant has given some visual, accurate visual representations, but he has not taken any photos or any visuals from the conservation area and from the listed theatre. The building is going forward rather than backwards, and the, it will harm and be detrimental to the visual views, to the CIPD, and also to the Wimbledon town. Um, I'm calling for you to reject this. The, the, you can do a lot better. Yes, it, is, ha, it does have uh, brickwork, which is a lot better than the previous application. Nonetheless, it has come forward by a metre and a half. It is taller, going to be taller than the CIPD, and the drawings are inaccurate. Thank you. Three minutes is going to be split between Lee, Joe Franco. Do you want to speak first? Uh, James Franco. Can we start now? Yeah. Press the silver box. I think it's not working. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm a volunteer tree warden and am interested in protecting and planting trees in Merton. The landscape proposals located in a courtyard on the first floor are not sustainable. A sustainable scheme would pr uh, provide large trees planted in the ground at the back and front of the development to improve air quality on the traffic polluted Broadway and achieve a much welcomed greenness to the barren streetscape by forming a visual link between large trees at Holy Trinity Church and the Old Town Hall. You may not be aware of the Council's repeated attempts and failure at planting trees on the Broadway. Failure mostly because of inadequate tree pits due to uncontrolled underground services. If you need confirmation that space should be found for large trees, extracts from the reply to a question at the last full Council meeting state the Council's view that a. Trees improve the livability of cities and reduce costs in a number of ways, including reducing stormwater runoff, improving air quality, storing carbon, providing shade and reducing urban heat island effects. B. For reasons outlined above, the administration supports planting of trees in the borough both on and off street. This statement implies acknowledgement of the London Mayor's policy to increase tree canopy cover in London and it will be a badly missed opportunity if the application is approved as, as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. <clears throat> I trust the committee is aware, uh, I'm going to take this a little bit wider now, but obviously you're aware that Crossrail 2 is fading into the sunset. Visions of tall office blocks and a big Westfield are fading too. But unfortunately, as a result of the speculation, commercial ownership is now held by just a handful of companies. This building is one of them, and elsewhere they've shown no interest in safety, high quality architecture, green credentials, or anything that would make our town better. Their eye is on money, how to get the biggest profit, and then move on. So when you raise your hand to grant permission, as you've been told to do, this old style, just about ticking the box proposal will become part of our future, even though it was designed for the past. A Swedish child is telling the world to panic, to do everything in our power to address climate change. Merton's climate change officer's response to this, 
Don't worry about the carbon shortfall. Pay us 27,000 pounds and all your carbon sins are forgiven. This response is in no way acceptable. Wimbledon is your economic heartland and, and you're ignoring it. Please listen to your conscience and, as you cast your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Sandeep Singh Barbara, please. I understand you're going to share your uh, with Peter Mummy. Yeah, Peter's going to go first. Here you go. Thanks, Jen. Um, uh, just a few salient points. Firstly, um, contrary to the front page, and just want to make this clear the um, front page committee report, the scheme did go for the design review panel, um, and they support the new design. Um, so the scheme one story higher than that which was supported last year by the committee, as the uh, presenting officer has noted. Support from officers, including the design council's design officer, uh, was predicated on substantial design improvements this time around to the facade of the scheme. As has been pointed out, this includes additional brickwork, smaller balconies as opposed to, as opposed to the winter gardens, and a more integrated ground floor. Uh, appearance. There'll be a more refined upper, upper level approach uh, which is designed to complement uh, the CIPD building next door rather than compete with it. Um, I'd also like to stress that the building in overall terms um, will not be as high as the CIPD building as, uh, as some have, have claimed. Um, there's no access to private immediate space for all units Honestly. and the internal space requirements meet London plans standards. Mm. Notwithstanding what's just been said, the plan the scheme meets minimum sustainability requirements and there's no harm to neighbouring immunity other than that which was seen as acceptable last time out. Just a couple of points on the uh, objections that were aired first off. Uh, initially, the drawings are correct, uh, but they are verifiable. And as has been noted in the addendum, uh, we're happy to agree to a condition which will verify those uh, floor levels. Um, also, the National Planning Policy Framework was adopted in 2012. Um, that's way before the appeal scheme was, uh, was decided upon. Mm -hmm. So, in summary, the committee has before it a one story tweak to a scheme that there was a resolution approved seven months ago. The advantages of this have been outlined. Um, substantial design improvements and the delivery of additional housing units. Therefore, I ask that the committee uh, go with the author's recommendation and approve the scheme. Thank you.
uh, in terms of landscaping, we are um, recommending landscaping um, to be secured by Condition 13. Um, that does specifically include some tree planting um, as stated, so that is, that is to be secured um, on site. Just trying to gain information about the design review panel because it's reported in here as not having been to design review. But you said it did. Did it go as a pre app? Yes, it went as a pre app. We had two meetings with the design review panel. Do you know what the verdict was on? We got to Amber on the second one, uh, and, but that had a different design to the balconies, and the balconies were amended by the design officer. Uh, and since then, through the case officer, we asked whether we did that. The amber would go to a green or not. Uh, it was told us that it effectively does go to a green because we changed balconies, but it didn't go to the design review panel with the balconies as they are. Just had with winter gardens for the first two floors and then open balconies above. The rest of the scheme is exactly the same, it's just the balconies. No, no. Okay. Did it go back to the design review? Could change it. We can't, we can't say it's a green until, <laughs> but that's a verdict of, of the designer and people. It, it, it a question you asked to say, it, is it a one off sense and was the last one that they actually did? So I think that. Okay, um, members, for questions, please. I've just got two questions related to um, affordable housing. So the planning history shows that in 2016 the applicant proposed a six-storey building providing 16 units and 25% affordable housing. But three years later, this proposed development that comes before us today is larger with 20 units. Yet the viability assessment suggests that no units can be affordable. But could officers indicate what's changed so significantly? over the past three years to go from 25% to zero and whether they're confident in these calculations. <laughs> and the second question is that in the event that this were to be approved, could the affordable housing term as part of the Section 106 agreement um, be tightened to determine when the viability reviews take place, such as one prior to construction and one post construction so that it's slightly less vague. Yeah, thank you. Um, in terms of the, the affordable housing, yes, uh, so the scheme, uh, the scheme before you did have some affordable housing um, proposal. So the 2013 application had six affordable units on site. The 2016 application submitted then had uh, four units on site. Um, they've all been subject to viability reviews. Um, and in this application, um, you'll know it's a 2017 uh, ballot, uh, 2017. Um, this has been a, a, a sticking point with this, with this scheme, um, but we have looked at it with our independent consultants and um, unfortunately is, is throwing out this, um, you know, housing can be sought on this, on this case. Um, so that's, that's unfortunately where we stand with it. Can I ask about the mechanism there? So how does that operate on this side? Um, yeah, so the, um, in accordance with the uh, uh, maze guidance, we are applying the clawback, both the early and late stage review mechanism to this application. So it stays within the um, agreement um, on this application, so that is, that is 
So if, if it's found that there could be affordable on there, would it be in, in payment but not in kind of in, 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 in building? It would depend on how much can, could be clawed, clawed back, essentially. So what we would have to do is is come in with um, with the mobile uh, liability assessment then showing um, that it's actually shown, shown to be you um, could get some some form of on there, um, depending on what those units or contribution be down to um, the vice for marketing consultants on the section one six officer. slight difficulty with my question because it's based on the viability review that we got sent today so I know that that's confidential so um, I, won't, I won't talk about specific numbers but in the analysis of the um, costs which were commissioned by, from PSW um, it says that the um, costs are high by a margin of 41% um, and it then goes on to talk about some issues about the terms of ground for premises and it, the, the conclusion is, in our opinion, the design, development, and construction that should be produced by an amount of money. Um, now, that doesn't seem to have um, gone through into anything about the affordable housing. If the costs are less, they ought to be able to have more affordable housing, but they don't seem to have changed the amount of affordable housing at all to reflect the fact that their costs were 40% too high and that there were some other issues. Um, the, um, the figure that you're referring to in that um, document that has been taken into account in the um, in the council's viability uh, um, consultants viability um, review. So that that figure um, has been has been taken off um, as part of that session. Okay. Can I have a can I follow up? I mean, okay. I'm, I'm sorry if you're missing the point. We've got a viability proposal from the developer which says they can afford, you know, that what they can do is one shared ownership thing. We have our report that says that their costs are a substantial amount too high, and yet we haven't made any change to the affordable housing. Now, if the costs that they've put forward are too high, they must be able to afford more, more affordable housing. It may only be one more unit, but that'd be one more, one more family house. So I don't understand why we haven't changed the affordable housing. I have tried to understand it this afternoon since we've got the viability, but I just don't. So I'm going to describe on that point. The, the, the costs have been taken into consideration. And even with that taken into consideration, the final analysis is that there isn't any affordable housing that's uh, on the site, on the site. In the end result, in fact, there's still a deficit, even though there's no affordable housing being provided on certain matters actually in the report as well. So that has been, been taken into consideration. Okay. I mean, they're not doing it as a public service, are they, building, building these flats? So I'm not going to be able to vote for this on the basis that I think if we get a report that says a large sum of money should be taken off, that should be affected in the affordable housing. Right, just confirm that has been factored in. Any questions? Councillor, yeah. Before we move. Before we leave the issue of the report for uh, for my sister mind, I need, to be, I need to be convinced that if previously you had one of those in there when you have 60 units, you've gone up to 20 units and it's new army to give you presented the case, but it's not actually feasible to have any appropriate. Something is wrong, but I'm afraid I can't figure it out. So just one simple thing we're thinking about, it's well on the building costs rise significantly higher you go, know, the building is slightly higher, so it will be a significant more building costs. Things change, that was two or three years ago, so circumstances change, for instance, sale costs might be less now as well, I think, in consideration in terms of viability assessments, there's a, there's a whole number of factors. It is, it is a, an issue that is um, given to experts to look at, I'm not going to pretend that I am an expert in that, but we have the report and members have been given that report. Um, Currently, we uh, actually published those reports on the website. This particular application came in some time ago, and that's the only reason why it's not published this time. It is complicated, isn't it, really? I mean, we, the, the company provided viability assessment. We have to get an independent assessor to check it out and, and then rely on their judgment about it. 
a narrow view, get the all we've got at hand really is well that mechanism when it comes down to um, the statement that there is no affordable, is the clawback mechanism. Um, because if it proves that, that it's possible, then that money should be there for uh, to come back. So it, it's complicated, but we have to rely on these viability assessments. It's um, it's the way it is to come to my mouth. So just, just to come back on this point about the prices going down, their own assessment, their own assessment, I don't think this figure is confidential, says according to land registry figures, London borough of is amongst the boroughs experiencing growth with 8% growth in the end of September. So their own figures say that the, the value of the flats is going up. So it's just an example of giving how things can change on the same specific in that case. Um, just an example of how things can change all the time in terms of viability statements. When things can change within two months, that's why we have to fallback mechanism. So if the prices do rise significantly, then we can get a percentage of that back for affordable housing. That's something. We need the housing. Um, a different Zachary. Why are we looking at residential here rather than on this development? It's simple answer to that. That's what's on the application form. It's uh, in terms of policy. Yes, we, we do encourage. Well, we encourage residential and office developments in town centres. On, and on this particular site? I don't think this site has a specific allocation in the um, proposal plan. I don't think it's a specific site, so no, it's, it's, it's a general policy that would apply. Any other questions? Yes, come. Um, can I confirm that if we were to review this application this evening, that the earlier application was sort of P. 16 p 2585 it's still pending, so that could still be developed. Yes. Uh, yes, so that's the session once agreement hasn't been signed on that, and that's why it's still pending. So that could, yeah, as soon as that's signed, then it could finish the application. Okay, so can we look at the two buildings? The photos that you had in the two buildings, could we just, I mean, is it possible to go Okay. And can you just, just quickly explain again the difference between those two? Um, the main difference is, is actually materials and uh, height. So uh, this one's lower in height. Um, the materials were, it was more of a grey sort of cladding um, with some, as you call, sort of garden mapping with a sort of enclosed glazing. Um, whereas this application is, is full brick elevation with um, glass. Families and also glass to the roof um, set back as well, not planned. And am I right in thinking that that application would commit um, <coughs> the applicant to affordable housing? So, so why why is it viable in that case, and it wouldn't be for this application they put forward today? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a possibility, it might not be, might be rather than that. Um, but um, we are where we are with Barbara's on, on this application. Um, and unfortunately, professional advice back to us is that um, it is our final. Councillor Atala. Councillor Atala, thank you. In terms of specification of the buildings, there are some, there's conduct around that. RICS sort of approved how much is reasonable in terms of, uh, you know, a spec for a particular building. For instance, they can't just put double tax in there and say it's worth a lot more money there, but we can't afford affordable housing. That is tested. In this particular case, of course, there was an additional test. It wasn't just a viability statement. We actually sent the viability, viability assessors then went off and asked for, asked for some further advice from this particular scheme as well. And that's why I came back with the, the changes that were proposed. I need to speak to the agent if this is okay, but the design and review panel, that previous building um, which we see there with different shaped balconies and different exterior, was that part of the advice that you changed? Um, when we presented it, we did 
extent that the scheme that you see before you, the public scheme, did go to DRF, but that scheme was actually put up as the starting point. And I can simply say that they wholeheartedly rejected that design. They were not happy with it in any way, shape, or form, and wanted an improvement on it. Um, any other questions? Councillor Amin. Okay. Since we have gone back to the informal housing again, there's um, no reference or I can't find it about um, money to be paid to the council in compensation for us providing for the housing. Shouldn't that be a condition? And uh, if so, is it there? And have I missed it? So I've got a question why there's compensation for not providing affordable housing. Well, I assume that, I mean, given that they're talking about more than 50 properties, therefore there should be affordable housing provided in it. I've heard about the fact that 16 will provide affordable housing, 20 won't, which sounds a bit strange to me, but I've heard that. But let's, let's say that if they're not going to provide affordable housing on the site, are they going to provide any sale money so that we can provide affordable housing as well? Because there's some money not in here. And the sale money to give us that, that holds curves for every development. Um, so there will be a, for want of a better word, compensation in those terms. Right. If there was, I mean, in terms of compensation, if there was viability and sufficient viability in the scheme, then of course the compensation would be the affordable units. The whole point is the assessments demonstrate that there is viability in the scheme. But yes, there is some money that would be attached to this particular scheme. Just reading the document as it stands, uh, it just comes back that there's so many stuff that's actually mentioned here. If you make the report without knowing that, which I should have done, um, it implies that they're getting in the way with the renting properties with not paying anything. And in the end, as the ground floor was a business development, therefore, presumably, the whole side of business, then don't you make a lot more money on residential? That is common. <laughs> Do we have any, any other questions? questions? Comments? Any comments? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm taken aback by the design review panel have looked at this because I would, this is a, a sensitive site and it really would have been good to have that opinion here. Yeah. Uh, looking at the design before us, we're told that the the first one was, was, was roundly rejected. This one has m made the grade and uh, um, uh, I think members would like to see it continue on that journey to green, but it ain't there yet. I also note that the we did here refuse the, uh, the, the, the 2014 application. And okay, that was overturned by the inspector, but that, that is that is the way of inspectors. So we were confident that that was not good enough. Um, we are now into relying on one judgment as to whether this this makes the grade. I'm not not wholly convinced that it does. Um, and that's leaving aside the very important concern about affordable housing, which uh, Councillor Lanning has very correctly uh, identified. Any other comments? Councillor So it's fundamentally I, I personally dislike the proposal. I think it represents overdevelopment. I think while there have been some improvements to materials and to design since the last application, I still do think it's out of character. However, on the basis that when it was last proposed um, it, and refused by the Council on Design Grounds, the planning inspectors said it wouldn't have an unacceptable impact on the character and appearance. I think I'm of the view that if we rejected it on the same grounds again, no. we'd lose that appeal. And that would be because the application is policy compliant. And we would then have to pay the costs and potentially a cost award to us. So I am not conflicted. Can I ask about the tree issue that was raised earlier on? Um, talking about sustainability of the trees. Um, Yes, just the 
We do have a um, landscape condition which is 13. Um, 13. 13. Um, so we are securing um, what we call tree planting. Um, potential areas for that um, would be potentially at the front here, um, potentially down the back and the sides. Um, this wouldn't be a is a, a, a big access. Um, so there is potential for the vehicles can be wheeled through the access gate to the to the road to be serviced. Um, so there's potential there, which is why we have the condition as to be related to trees as well. No, the double negative. Um, but we can also, I think, take on board the, the, the doubts of the, the design review panel that it is not as good as it might be. Um, and in that respect, I, I'm confident that we would not be making a reckless decision, but we would have some evidence for our view that the, the design um, still fails to uh, reflect the the, uh, the standard and quality we would expect in this particular location. So that would be my 
essentially DMV2. Um, that would be my reason for refusal. Design on NPPF, honestly. What about overlooking? Not intrusive, overlooking DMD2, DMD4, design. Honestly. What about the NPPF with the different paragraphs? Okay, I've got an issue really, one that we haven't had the design review panel's report at this committee, and for me, I think that would have been quite important. Um, we could defer this for the design review panel's report to be included, or we could go ahead as we are, and I think that could be a complication for us. I mean, as one of the people that votes against, I'd be happy to have it deferred and come back when we've got the benefits of their advice. Yes, I do feel uncomfortable. We haven't got the design review in this report. It should have been there. Yep. Chair, I just clarify the point. I've actually tested the case last year. wasn't aware that it was a design review panel. In fact, he's on the opinion that may not have been. It hasn't. There may be some confusion around this. We need to clarify that. I think it is important to clarify. Uh, my advice would be to clarify that before you made a decision this evening. I think you still can make that decision to defer now. Shall we do that? Shall we defer? I think we've had the discussion around it. If it comes back to committee, I think we've had the full debate. It will be really around why we haven't had the design review inclusion here. So we have not turned this down tonight. We are deferring it until we receive that report. And we'll include it in the next meeting. Yeah. Is that reasonable? Okay. That's the decision then. The next agenda item is agenda item 9 for Westside Common. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, members, the application site is located at the junction of Westside Common and Chester Road in the middle of the village. The site comprises a large attached two story dwelling with associated garden and vehicle parking. The dwelling on the <coughs> grades existed and located within the Women and West Conservation Area. The site surrounding comprise other residential dwellings and the common uh, to the east. <coughs> this is, uh, existing uh, building on the site. Um, as you see, it is a, uh, a large detached property. Um, as outlined, it is Grade 2 listed. Um, over here is exist existing basement, <coughs> ground, first, and then second floor. The proposal itself is for planning commission and the stability consent for internal works along with single story renovation, <coughs> basement, detached garage, and alterations to access. So, talking you through the plans, um, this is the proposed uh, site plan that shows the ground floor level. So, the proposal includes um, punching through a uh, boundary wall over here, creating access, drop curve and also a detached garage with ancillary um, bedroom space above. Single story rear extension is here. <coughs> There's alterations to the access gates, so uh, the existing access from the common road is coming here, that would be proposed to move here. Turning to floor plans themselves, the basement itself, so that is proposed here at London Red. The basement proposed is an um, underground swimming pool, um, <coughs> underground storage facility under the garage. The stairs linking up to the dwelling would be through the proposed new extension over here. So the basement itself is not underneath the existing listed building. Um, some minor alterations are proposed to the existing um, basement to the, to the building itself as well. So the first floor and second floor. Um, at first floor, uh, sorry, second floor level, a new door window is proposed on the rear of the dwelling. 
That is the first one I'd love to garage that's proposed. A single story extension to the ground floor is a flat roof design. So turning to elevations. So the view from Chester Road, which is at the top here, you just see the proposed extension coming out here, um, set in away from the boundary, current boundary wall. The proposed new garage with accommodation above is proposed here, so towards the end of the site. The other side view, so that's the single story extension here. Um, at the front of the property, um, it is proposed to um, add some railings to the front boundary wall. And we'll have a drawing in a minute on that. And the new door window is here on the back of the property. This just shows the elevations of the garage. So the garage would have door windows serving the roof space. It provided an ancillary accommodation bedroom. It's a section drawing, um, existing up the top and proposed below. So the proposed section you'll see the basement um, set on the ground, a uh, single sort of extension, and the garage there. In terms of the front boundary wall treatment, um, existing is at the top, proposed below. So the new access gates slightly further along, and again with the metal railing is getting on top. In terms of access, the, there's an existing drop curve here, um, which serves as the dwelling. That would be reinstated in the, uh, in the parking space um, put back in onto the road. The proposal would result in a loss of um, two parking spaces um, for the drop curve to gain access to the garage. In terms of trees, um, it is proposed to remove some trees on the site. Um, dotted in red are trees to be removed. In black are the ones to be retained. Our tree officer has, has looked at the scheme and assessed the proposal. Um, the trees to be removed are not considered to be harmful to the conservation area. The proposal does include new landscaping for the garden. Um, it would include additional tree planting. Um, so again, the, the further details of that is to be secured on a condition. Turning to site photographs. Um, so as you see, it's a large building, um, lots of striking features. Um, mainly, its features are the striking gable ends on the parts of the building. Uh, this is from Chester Road. So there's existing drop curb here that would be reinstated and new uh, parking space put in there on the road. In terms of the access to the punching through here is where it's proposed for the uh, drop curb in the garage facility. I'll do a long distance view. This is in the garden. Uh, there's a boundary wall that's just the road. So the single store extension from right here. So this tree would be removed and the single store extension would come out here off this section of the building. Uh, that's around the front, that face of the common. So this would be removed and a new gate will be put in here. And a new on the existing drive looking back towards the common. These trees will be removed as part of the proposal. And again a long distance view on Chester Road. So the garage will be coming in here on the same front building line as this existing neighbouring garage here. It would be taller as it has combination in the roof. So we're going to turn attention now to the modifications sheet. Um, we have a further consultation, uh, further representations that we have received there and some and summarised. Overall, the proposal has been carefully considered by officers and in conjunction with consultee responses, officers are satisfied that the character and setting of the list of buildings in the conservation area might be harmed. The scale, form, position of proposed extensions and basement are considerably well within the site without causing harm to surrounding the neighbouring community. Appropriate conditions are recommended in line with the advice from consultees and officers therefore recommended to be granted. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, Hugh Rance. Hello, thank you, Chair. Um, President of Chester Road. Um, whilst I have no desire to talk to stop a sensible, well considered development in what is, as you said, an absolutely stunning problem, uh, we're deeply concerned that elements of the proposal do not meet the statutory test that the Council is obliged to meet when considering development in the conservation areas and indeed within the current literature listed buildings. Really, I'm just going to focus on one area, and that's the double carriage at the back, so the top left hand. Uh, of that picture you're looking at. And the reason we're concentrating on that in the three three points is that it's the biggest concern for residents, talking about residents have written in saying it's the biggest concern and it will cause unnecessary harm to the quality and character of the area and just to the Sigma Road. The council's policy is very clear that development should be as a minimum to protect the character of the conservation area in which we live. The garage that you see proposed there uh, we do not think at all uh, would, um, and would represent fail to meet these policy requirements due to its scale and its design. The three points that I want to mention as they can first be from section 5.5.4. The Council's conservation officer does not comment, comments do not go far enough. You know, those garages are not in keeping with other garages in the road. Other garages in the road do not have accommodation above them. Other garages in the road do not have three door windows. Other garages in the road do not have a staircase. On the left hand side, you can see that, which directly looks over the property to the left, which is to edge of the road. So if you were climbing up that staircase and then you put the door and turn to the left, you look straight into the driveway. Um, whilst the committee report refers to no, no landing, and I'm just expanding this one a bit, there no looking, it is clear that any person entering or leaving the street would have to use it to 2A, and the relationship is there unnamely and would cause material harm to the reasonable communities. Then section seven, my second point, seven point four, character purpose and heritage. The height and side corners and staircase remain unbalanced in their design. They're not respectful or appropriate to the area, as I've mentioned earlier. And when, as I've uh, said earlier, no other garage in our area has this height or volume and indeed a, a, a bedroom above it. Um, I think I'm right in saying that 2.4 metres is a single parking space, a single garage, I guess there is a little bit wider than that. This garage here, <coughs> I think is 7.5 metres wide uh, for a double garage, which I think this residence, and hopefully you, feel is totally excessive. Um, and the reason it's so wide is because they want the bedroom above it, uh, with the door windows, and the other reason, I guess, is that on the staircase to the left, uh, outside it to make that bedroom as big as possible. Well, if they want the garage at all, why don't they move the staircase to somewhere else? Um, I.e. not over just a road number 2A. Um, the last point I want to make is the proposed garage looks um, nothing like the photographs uh, which we submitted. I'm really uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Lastly, to access the site, um, it has perfect good access okay. on this side. Continue using it, please, and don't put this garage. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm also a resident of Chester Road, living number four, and I share the wall where the first new hole will appear for the garage. And as Hugh said, some of my residents have objected to that quite strongly. Um, I have a slightly different angle, which was put in other concerns around re relocation of the street light, which I do not believe has been addressed as a public safety issue. I don't often say this in public, but I have a PhD in transportation engineering and studied street safety and street furniture. And opposite to where the garage is proposed, which requires moving a street light, is a set of unoccupied garages in quite a black hole. In Chester Road itself, the first 100 metres, and anyone knows it, is quite dark and quite unoccupied. There are no refuges for safety, which is seen in the previous application. 22% violence and sexual offences are the main ones we're worried about. My daughter looks at every night, and taking away the illumination of those garages from that street lamp is the only illumination it has. It literally is right at the edge of where there'll be a black spot. So I think that's not being considered by any urban planners, police, or any lighting experts. That needs to be addressed. You can't just say move it and move it without consequences. It's there for any reason in the first place. Uh, secondly, on the garage site itself, you've already commented. I have a double garage that's five metres wide, 
seven and a half meters, I'd get three jacks, so one more than one Presco if I wanted that. That seems to be excessive. Um, if you approve that with bedroom space above it, I will be applying immediately to expand my garage and the bedroom above it, will conservatively add about half a million pounds to the value of my property. So there are five other garages who are coming to the same request. So you'll be selling a precedent on that road for something that doesn't exist at the moment. Finally, just a small point. In the letter from the advisor, he talks about one crossover and one garage, being replaced by one crossover and one garage. The crossover that he's talking about is basically a side entrance to the house that goes into interior space in the middle of it, you can just see out there, which could conservatively be an old mini, maybe a Morris thousand, and replacing a two and a half metre let down with a seven and a half metre let down. It doesn't appear to be one for one, and that seems to be a disingenuous representation of the materials to me. So that's point. safety, it's not safe, the lighting is not safe. Secondly, the garage is completely out of character with the others, and all of the, all the last will be applying for new garage space. Um, and thirdly, some of the statements in the applicant's material, some which is disingenuous. Thank you. Uh, David Graham and Tarzan Basler, and we may share your time, yeah? Chair, I'm Thank you, Chair. My name is Tarzan Basler, and my wife and I are the owners of West Lodge, which will be our family home to eight of us, our children and our elderly parents. We're excited at the prospect of restoring West Lodge, given that it has been subject to unsympathetic alterations by various owners in the last 30 years, and saw West Lodge divided into three houses and then return back to a house and then let out to multiple people at the same time up until last year. The application before you is a result of working in close collaboration with your officers over the last nine months with MPC to ensure this scheme before you is in accordance with applicable planning policies and which is recommended by your officers. Our proposals have all been well received. The single element that has been on focus, and this is the majority of the objections, is the proposed relocation of this existing modern 1980s garage fronting the common to the rear of West Lodge. There is an existing 80s built garage which is fronting the common which we are removing from, from the site. The proposed garage aligns with and is similar to the neighbouring garages at 2, 2A, 4 and 6 Chester Road and we are therefore merely asking to enjoy the same access that the above homes on Chester Road already enjoy. The focus of nearly all of the letters some of the people as far as away as Camp Road and North View, which are over half a kilometre away from us, is the loss of one street parking space necessary to allow access to the same garage. A misleading email has been circulated by one or two objectors requesting people to cut and paste its content to object. The basis of the email relates more to the precedent this may set than the loss of one actual space. As members will be aware, all applications are determined on their own merits and in a proportionate manner, having regard to the facts. As part of the planning application, a professional parking survey was undertaken by Pulsar, and we've distributed that on the 21st and the 24th of March. The results of the parking survey demonstrated that overnight there were 29 vacant parking spaces during the morning school drop-offs and 31 vacant spaces during school pickups, and there were 36 vacant spaces in total. The busiest time was on a Sunday lunchtime period where there were still 15 spaces. The survey work carried out supports the loss of one parking space, and this is also supported by your officers. If members consider this to be an issue, we would be willing to work with the council to find a further space so that there is no loss to street parking. To be clear, all works which are to be subject of this application are contained within the red line boundary. Therefore, any suggestion that the application is invalid is incorrect. This again has been accepted by your officers. Any agreement concerning access rights over the common will be dealt with in the proper way uh, in due course. At the present time, we access West Lodge via a grass and gravel track, like all other properties fronting the common, which will continue to be the case now and in the future. A vehicle access will be via Chester Road to the proposed garage, and as such, vehicle access to West Lodge will be maintained in all circumstances. The few objections to the works at this lodge have taken a subjective scattergun approach in the hope that something would inevitably stick. Planning officers are aware of the current confused and unkempt condition of West Lodge, 
with examples of new staircases added, new PVC glazing put in, in which the original layouts, sadly, are unrecognisable. This includes the boundary wall, which has been adulterated in an unsightly fashion over the years, such that the original wall is no longer. We would love the opportunity to undertake a thoughtful and scholarly restoration in keeping with the listing status of West Lodge. The only extension to West Lodge would be to the rear and replaces an existing modern extension, as well as a basement beneath the garden. All these elements are supported by your officers. We've done also a comprehensive landscaping plan, including removal of some trees in the garden, the cherry, the apple, and the magnolia, but with a net increase of over 30 trees would go back in. Importantly, all existing trees along the rear boundary would be kept to protect the privacy of our neighbours. To conclude, Chair, we have received a lot of support and encouragement for these proposals. We have worked very hard with your planning officers, conservation officers, structural, drainage officers, tree officers, highway officers, all of whom have supported this application. The effect the addictions received appear to be from people who have not read the plans or the rationale for the proposals of West Lodge and have sent in cut and paste objections, misleading emails and texts from one or two objectors and such limited weight should be given to these comments. Indeed, they should be treated with caution. We see ourselves as custodians to take this old grand house built in 1894 and feel humbled and privileged to have the opportunity to revive her and restore its relationship to the common by taking her back to her original state. As such, and on behalf of all of my family, I respectfully ask members to grant planning and listed building consent. Thank you. Single family home. Uh, so, it, it, sorry. Uh, sorry. 
it is still not all occupants before in terms of separate houses, then I'm assuming it can be done again in separate houses. So your clause six can be overridden by the fact that it has been three separate properties and it could go back to being three separate properties and this house above a garage could be a separate property. So if they wish to put it back into three um, houses, they would need to permission for them. Any other questions? Councillor Mitty. Thank, thank you, Chair. Just uh, two very quick questions, clarifications for the house. Um, how many car parking spaces are being affected? I mean, uh, the, the applicants say one, and the objectors say two. So if you could confirm how many are being affected. And secondly, uh, can you 100% confirm that no part of the basement is under the listed building? Yeah, so we, in discussion with our highways officer, we've been looking at this. Um, essentially, it would result in a loss of um, two spaces because of the length required here to be taken out. And the proposed them to put back in one space that was put in this section here. So currently, that's not a lot of parking space because of that historic drop curve. Um, and so, yeah, so there is a, a, an out one space. Um, however, given the um, capacity and surrounding roads, um, it's not objective to this. In terms of the basement itself, um, the original application, when it was submitted, the basement was up to the adjoining existing property at basement level. Um, following discussion with our conservation officer from the community of the texture of this building, um, we went back to the applicants advising it needs to be steps away. And so the amended plans have stepped that away um, from the list of building. Access to the basement is via stairs coming up um, here, which is in the proposed single story extension section. Um, so there are people linking to the basement, but that would be through the extension here. Councillor Thank you, Chair. I think we heard concerns about the stairs that are linked to the garage in terms of. You, would there be any issues around sort of privacy and overlooking to the neighbouring property, just given that the stairs are actually on that side rather than sort of looking into the property itself with its face in? Yeah, so there are stairs proposed on the western side of the garage building here. Um, so you'll see them go up this, this way, um, a little platform and entering into the, into the roof board there. Um, in terms of the neighbouring community, we have looked at this carefully. Um, at the front here, it is a um, driveway space um, and a garage here to the neighbouring property. Um, the neighbouring property to the to the west, um, their primary uh, outdoor living outdoor space is to the south of the house, um, down this way. Um, given the separation distance and the acute angle um, and the little height, um, you know, we can do you sort of project and plan on that basis. I just wanted to ask about the drop curve. Um, isn't it usual that they use two and a half car parking spaces rather than just one because you need to move the car into the, to the space? Um, I'm aware of that. The highway officer has looked at this um, and the location of where it needs to go. Um, so he is satisfied that um, that could become a space there. Um, and so that is, those aspects are to be secured by uh, condition 16 of the uh, 15, sorry, 15 in, in condition 4. Any other questions? Councillor what, what's the status of the boundary wall? Does that um, also form part of the, the Grade 2 listing? Um, supplementary on that, if, if one is to make breaches in the wall, what, what safeguards do you insist upon to you know, the, the rebuilding of the, 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 uh, the opening that you created? Um, yeah, so our um, conservation officer has, has advised us that the, the, the wall itself would be, you would need as the building extent to 
I'm sure it would be well suited because it falls part of the Kurdish listing to the property. Um, so, of course, the Great Fisher Building has a, a Kurdish platform that forms part of it. Um, in terms of the um, structural aspects, um, obviously, if permission is granted tonight, that is what we have to look for, and no other, no other works to it. Um, so, it's, our conservation officer hasn't recommended any particular set of garden conditions on that particular aspect. Um, but in terms of its accept acceptability, um, the reason behind us being happy with it is because it is at the bottom part of the, of the, um, of the wall, um, away, set away from the main property. And then the railings at the front propose are considered to be enhancements, but I think conservation officer to the front boundary will face to come. Any more questions? No? Yes, once again. The building at the back with the cars in. <coughs> Can you tell me what the uh, square meterage is of that on the ground floor? What did you say? Have that figure to hand? Meters. Not the square meters, no. Um,
moving the garage down the corner for the cars, um, for the people to walk from the house, the house to the, the garage. I'd understand that and I'd support that. But this is a separate house. In my ward, it's a separate house and it's worth a lot of money. And I don't think we should be sitting here um, under the auspices of building a garage and accepting that somebody's building a house. And therefore, I think this needs to go back to the drawing board. We need to have a traditional extension which suits a nationally respected and defendable listed building. And that the garage is suitable for putting cars in it, not for selling as a house. Any other comments? Councillor Russell, maybe. I agree with the loss of what Councillor Dean said. But I have to say that. Um, the extension has to be in keeping with the rest of the building because it's listed and so is the extension. Um, the wall on the outside also needs to be um, in keeping with what was there before. And the Important thing, the most important one, as far as I'm concerned, is the moving of the street map. Um, in Marwood, yeah, people want to move street maps all the time so they can book crossovers in. They're not allowed to do it. So why are we just saying no, you can't do that? Because it's a, it's a council property. It's not um, it's not owned by the people of Chester Road or the people in house. That one thing. The other thing is, if they want to put a crossover there, why can't they put it? somewhere where the street lamp is not, which means not at the end of their property, but in the middle of their property in some ways. Because that's what other people have to do. Well, in terms of lighting, obviously the relocation, it's only sort of been relocated at a very small, small distance. So you can see the existing course garage there, and I think this is the location of the lamp course there. So it's only a very minor, minor change. Okay. It's principle, it's not a flat that is minor or major, it doesn't make a difference. The other thing is that we've got a basement application here as well. Um, I know what the answer to this is, but I've got to sketch the Um Do we have any guarantee that people are putting basement applications as we build what they say they're going to build? Rather than, um, so if you put in an application for a swimming pool, it is going to be a swimming pool, not a Three bedroom property downstairs, which is what's happened next door to me. <coughs> um, is the, has the council got any uh, call on investigating whether the basements are what the basements say they're going to be or what they've been commissioned for? Councillor Russell, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you were shown the building. They would have, if they wanted that, they would have to come back for the um, plan permission to change it. Whether the extension is modern or traditional is a matter of design and, and, and taste. Many people will be in favour and some will be against and think conservation officers may have their opinion on this. It's not something that they're opposed to. So design is, is, is a matter of preference. Any other comments, please? Yes, that's my mind. I don't have any problem um, with the design. I'm not convinced that we have to keep everything exactly the same as it is, and I think sometimes um, the combination of new and old can look very good, and they seem to go into a lot of trouble here to have something. But the one thing that does worry me is this business about the lighting, um, and that's the, that's the biggest concern that I have. Um, can, can we just have again how far they're proposing to move the lamppost? Yes, if you can see from the plan before your mouse is even a little bit, so you can see the proposed lab was going to not the existing. We'll go back to photograph in a second and see if we can, where the existing one is. It's obviously somewhere in this location here, so it's moving a few meters uh, that way. Let's see if we can find that photograph now. So if you bear that in mind where it's going to be going, bear in mind that's the garage, and if we go back and try and we might have to zoom back out before we can do that. Yeah. 
for us. So it's not an accurate representation, in fact. I'm not sure if we're going very far at all, actually. Numbers about there. So the gamma is going in this location here. See, let me zoom that back up again. Um, unfortunately, you can't actually see where the exact boundary is, but to me, that looks like the same property. In this location here, this looks where the gamma is going. So I think the, the, the land board's plan seems to show it's, it's being moved. Potentially over this direction. Yeah, and sorry, just very far. Could I just come back? Was the uh, first question was the lamp lighting safety issue raised in any of the objections um, that we had? Well, I think we've I think that was it's a, this evening that I've raised. Yeah, yeah. Where the light is, the yeah. light going from there, going from there, a few yards that way, is not going to make a significant difference. Okay. It was so. raised, and it's the angle of the light and this opposite that's coming through it was raised. Is it possible for us to have any kind of planning condition that deals with these concerns, particularly about the angle of the light? I think the angle of the light, I mean, street lights are street lights, they don't tend to get angled as such. I mean, they're, they're, they're just, they're all pretty standard, as far as I'm aware. I think the progress here this evening is that it's angled to actually light up a similar area to previously. I just that's my point. Can, can we put a condition in to make sure that the, the, the places that are lighted at the moment are still lighted once we've moved the street light? Yeah. I'd never say it's exactly, exactly the same. I mean, we can put a request into highways to find forward if that happens. It's, it's not within the site. That's the problem we have here. Whilst it's being located, we can certainly put that request as an informative in that that is taken into consideration. Provided it can be done, it's very simple to do, and if it, it can be adjusted as you're suggesting, then I don't see the reason why that would be a problem to you. I don't have any other comments. Yes, sir. Nope. Then I think um, we should move to the vote. Can I see those in favour of this application? We've got two uh, recommendations. Our list of building consent to subject to conditions and grant plan permission subject to conditions. Can I see those in favour, please? Those against. And then, well, that's it. Then the recommendation is approved in both cases. We now move to the agenda item eight, which is Wellington Work. Um, for an 80 meter long uh, vehicle 
going in from both access points to the site. Come on, sort of car. So to start with the grass. So this is standing looking to, um, down the existing access road, which ends up at Dorbush Avenue. There is a residential property you can just see there on Dorbush Avenue. As I said, this surface is currently the gravel uh, surface at the moment. Um, it's proposed to be um, resurfaced with a new permanent paving. That's existing um, turning area at the moment. Um, also existing parking area here. Beyond this uh, fence here is the uh, communications bar, which is proposed to be removed as well. Let me see here. Um, looking the other way, so that's the beginning in the southwest. Um, eventually towards the other industrial units in Wellington Works. And you see the recreation ground to the right there. And so essentially, the application extension will be coming up here at this point. Um, that's the other end of the unit. So the north, east. Uh, sorry, can I have a conversation in the middle of this? If you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chair, I sent a turbulence attention now to the, uh, to the update sheet. Uh, we will see there are some um, adjustments to the private within the report. Um, and one further objection received, which is summarised there. Um, overall, Chair, the proposal will provide the extension of existing building that is currently for use. Although the building is currently not occupied, it retains its for use and thereby there is no objection in principle to the extension of the existing building. The site can be accessed by two access points in the council, council's transport plan to consider the likely impact of additional floor spaces surrounding the highway and pedestrian network. Officers have not identified planning harm as the proposal and therefore recommend permission be granted such conditions and section 106 agreement with securing ensuring future occupiers of the unit could not be the same part of the premise of the surrounding road network. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Rose Greenham. Thank you. In recent email correspondence, the case officer, Alan Woodward, has stated that this application is for a, quote, single-storey extension to an existing building. No change of use is proposed, unquote. However, the councillors will see, upon reading the detail of the proposals, that this is clearly a misrepresentation of the true impact of the application. Currently and historically, all access to the proposed site is via Wellington Road. There is no historical precedent of access via Dawlish Avenue. Dawlish Avenue is a residential cul-de-sac, only used by the residents of Dawlish Avenue. Residents' children regularly play safely in the street, which is a very rare occurrence in London these days. The detail of the proposal shows that the developers plan to establish unprecedented access to the site via Dawlish Avenue. As a result, commercial traffic would travel along a residential cul de sac, and this will incur significant risks in terms of road safety and pollution to this community. I refer councillors to LBM's core strategy adopted in July 2011, and in particular to point N of this policy, which requires developers to, quote, promote measures to reduce the impact of goods vehicles in residential areas, unquote. Therefore, granting permission to actively increase commercial vehicles on both Wellington Road and Dawlish Avenue would directly contravene and contradict the LBM policy regarding residential areas. The current entry access to the site is via Havana Road and Wellington Road. However, both of these roads form the main pedestrian route used by 600 primary school pupils attending Wimbledon Park Primary School Little Learners Nursery and the Dunsford Road Recreation Ground. The Council's Transport Department have already identified that these children are at risk from the commercial traffic using this route and are already looking at ways to reduce these risks. To grant permission to develop this site will simply increase the safety risks and also increase pollution at the school. This site and its inherent access issues are already well known 
to the planning department as access to the site was deemed dangerous by the government's planning inspectorate in August 2018 and Gold Press appeal was therefore dismissed. Where do priorities lie on this application? Do priorities lie with granting permission to Gold Press so they may immediately sell the site at premium profit? Or do priorities lie with protecting the health and safety of incumbent residential and educational communities, Wellington Road and Dawlish Avenue? I therefore respectfully ask the councillors to refuse permission to this application. Thank you. Um, Kevin Goodman. Thank you, Chair, members of the committee. This is um, a very simple and straightforward planning application that before you tonight. And we're surprised at the level of representation that you made and the, and the comments just made. The council actually approved a very similar application at the Wellington Road end of this estate uh, in April last year, when they committed the conversion of the uh, former Cromwell toilets on the Wellington Road, Wellington Estate, to uh, commercial workshop space at all. No representations were made on that application when it was advertised locally. And we can only assume, therefore, it's a dig at the applicants rather than the application here. This uh, is a very simple application, say, to add three additional bays to a current lawful use that's sitting there at the moment is vacant. As accepted in your office's report, the principle is acceptable in terms of scattering employment use and enhancing and adding to it. No harm to the character and appearance of the area as identified by your officers. It's also an appropriate design scale. We've added three bays to the end and in fact enhanced it with the, um, the ambulant access to the building as well, which doesn't currently exist. There's no impact upon residential amenity. It is remote from any residential <coughs> property and it backs onto the roof of the industrial estate. In highway terms, there was a lot of debate, as been mentioned, about access to this site. We want highway officer, whereas the of the previous mixed use application, this is a totally different type of application, and they have raised no objection. It's agreed there's been one additional movement associated with this extension in the PCAM. So it's, it's, it's immature in that respect. And therefore, I commend to you your officer's recommendation and to grant permission for this we request. Thank you. If I may, so, so um, members will see in the planning history section there was um, an appeal um, for a mixed use scheme providing 22 residential units and commercial office space at ground level um, that went to appeal um, last year. Um, went to public inquiry, um, and what well, the main issues from the um, appeal decision was what to talk about access and safety. Um, however, that scheme included 22 residential units. Um, this scheme doesn't. Um, this scheme includes the extension of floor space to the existing lawful use. Um, the inspector, in dismissing the appeal and the um, appeal scheme, did raise strong concerns with people using the Wellington Works access, which is over here, in terms of accessibility, people walking from their residential units. But that's under the context of the residential unit scheme. Um, so what we have to look at here is, it's a lawful building with a lawful use. Um, it does have two access points. Um, the, this access point is touched upon by the inspector in, in the appeal. Um, talking about acceptable access in principle, um, access under control of the impediment. Um, so what we have to look at as a highways officers is, um, what is the impact of 80 square metres additional to the existing industrial unit building in its lawful use. Um, and they have come back having that, that the potential would be for the net gain of one uh, vehicle movement um, during the peak, peak rush hour period. Um, so, yes, the plan history could be to consideration in this case, but the, that appeal decision was for a very different scheme to what's before you tonight. So I think that's the point. Thank you, Joe. Did the panel want a minute quickly as point of order to read today's letter? Have you had a chance to review that? I'll read it out too. Read it out. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if I can refer then to the um, application last year that was rejected, it was rejected by the council and also after full appeal to the planning inspectorate. And 
There was a site visit as well by the planning inspector, and this site is very, very particular. It's got extremely limited, difficult access rights. And what the appeal found, and what the inspector found, was that any increase in capacity at this very tight site would be extremely difficult and compromising for residents. And there's two very difficult access points. The first one is welcome to road. And like when I was first elected as a councillor um, nearly a year ago, I walked down, well, I tried to walk down Wellington Road to see what this site was all about. Not only I couldn't drive a car down there, even a bicycle, let alone a commercial van or a lorry for an industry, I couldn't even walk down it. It's so narrow, and there's lorries and vans queuing up, girders on the floor. I couldn't even walk down there, let alone and you know, drive a van or lorry down there for a new industrial unit or an enhanced increased capacity industrial unit. And it's very understandable why the planning inspector on the site visit dismissed it as an access right out of hand for any increase in capacity. And when you look at the other access uh, point, potential one, Dawlish Avenue, although it's spoken of as an access point, actually it was dismissed because it hasn't been used as an access point for several decades. Even when that site was the last in industrial use a few years ago, light industrial use, they didn't even attempt to use that, Dawlish Avenue, as an access point because it's a quiet cul de sac. Um, it was just far too narrow, the children were playing around the end of the field, the sackers that we heard from residents, and that's why it was dismissed out of hand as an access point. And interestingly, when you look at the complaints, I've never seen a planning application, not just for so many complaints, but these are very small roads, and you see house after house, and also the neighbouring industrial units, they all say pretty much unanimously, this is just not going to work for residents at all in terms of increasing capacity of uh, an industrial site, a double the size of it, increased stories, have new access routes, have new lorries and vans coming down, all kinds of risks, it's just not going to, to work for residents. And they, they do seem to a bit of a cynical attempt to increase the size and footprint of it to make the actual residential um, application, which, which was rejected on the appeal, a little bit simpler. And it's also important to note there are a lot of ongoing concerns about the hours of use, which are not currently restricted. That is omitted from this application, even with the very light industrial use at the moment. All the residents are complaining that they've been woken up at 4 or 5 in the morning because some of these planning consents go back 30, 40 years. There are no restrictions. That's missing from this application. It should always be rejected. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah. Questions? Councillor Thank you, Chair. Um, Minimum point, what's the actual width of Dorish Road? <coughs> Sorry, do you mean Dorish Avenue? The, the, the road is not. Yeah, it's not to come back, do you mean the, the main road itself up here? Or do you mean the, the, the existing access? Um, it's a various width, so that actually happens to hand, um, but it's clearly single access. Um, I know that this is obviously... Um, so, I mean, with the track we've had here, you see they're showing a bit of an eight-meter-long vehicle truck can access down there, but clearly in a single lane. Um, so, I don't have the exact figures to hand. It, it will vary as you go down through there. Um, but still, it's good to see access. Is the existing site vacant? So, how was it um, calculated that um, the use would generate just one additional vehicular movement? <coughs> so, just because it's not. Um, in current use at the moment by an occupant doesn't mean that the lawful use falls away. So um, what we have to look at is um, there's existing lawful industrial building on that side on the side already. What would the impact be of the proposed extension on this on the surrounding road network? Bear in mind it's extending the existing lawful use on the site. So although it's vacant, um, we have to look at the uh, existing lawful use. So if we were to assume that the site were occupied, it would increase the vehicular movement, despite the fact that we're losing certain some car parking spaces as well. 
Yeah, so how we use team have looked at it and they, they're saying, taking into account the size of the existing unit, the proposal itself, they're saying would likely generate uh, one additional vehicle movement in during the peak hour period. Is that, if it were occupied, or at its current, as it's taken? That's but just based on the impact of the extension. So just that additional space would generate the additional one on top of what the law would be switching. As an industrial side, I mean, on, on what basis do they base that um, uh, assumption on you surely more than one car coming in with it? Um, so, as the justice officer, it, it is a lawful um, B1 industrial yeah, units. Um, but our highway team have had to look at what is the likely trip generation from the proposal, which is the extension to that existing order bill. Um, so that's what's that's how we consider it here in this case. Uh, I think the point being made here is, is that's about one human being coming to work on a sibling and going home, that's one trip. But being that this is industry and the chances are uh, vehicles will turn up, drop off some raw materials, uh, make something, and another uh, vehicle will turn up and take those finished goods away. That doesn't include that, does it? Unless they're not making anything at all. So just to be clear, in terms of trip generation, it's quite established practices. We have an existing use of property, the highways officers, it's an accepted practice, you look at the data that they look at in terms of what type of generation and industrial units, and they'll establish what he was making and what that use would generally generate. It's not an exact science, although it's, there's a lot of science to it. What I'm looking at here is the additional um, element of the building and how much that will generate on top of what is already a lawful use. In other words, someone owns it, they have a right to use and create that capacity on their own. So all of you have that little bit extra, and it's going to be one vehicle during the day, eight times. So that's the, that's the only difference that's going to be. Yeah, and, and I understand it's not an exact science, but there is some science behind it. But I think some councillors here are disputing that science. If the building is used as light industry, it seems to me if one vehicle movement a day sounds to me like a staff member, then there are no raw materials coming in at all, and there are no finished goods going out. We, we, it's a dispute that we can't answer tonight, but I just think that that figure could be wrong. I don't want to comment yet. It just doesn't make any sense. I think that's the point. I think the point, if you're looking at ex existing use, it's just because you've created that floor space, <clears throat> you've got existing vehicles coming in. For instance, 12, should we just say. Um, the difference would be, instead of being 12, would probably be 13. You wouldn't have numerous amounts more vehicles because the vehicles that are coming to the, the premises are doing those trips in any event, carrying the materials, whatever is going to be used. You wouldn't have dozens of extra ones coming just because of that particular material. You're just extending a small element of the industrial use. Councilman. Yeah, I'm just going to can we just go back to the point that was raised about the um, hours of operation that um, people, I think it was said that people were you know, being woken up at four or five in the morning because there were no hours of use restrictions. And we, uh, I mean, I, you know, people have moved into these homes knowing that there's this unit there, but at the half four or five in the morning does seem unreasonable. Could we put any restrictions on the hours of use as part of this planning? So, in looking at this, the, it is unrestricted at the moment, mm -hmm. it's quite cool, um, but given the size of the extension, um, we don't think that would be reasonable, which is why we have recommended it as a condition. Uh, so, you're saying we, we can't, you, you don't think it would be reasonable that they would have been able to you know, if we did? So, you say they'd be able to appeal it? We well, I mean, yeah. you're, okay. so are we saying that we can't do this, and if we did do it, that the people who are the site would be up against it. I think that would be the danger, um, because obviously, as I say, it's a very small extension. Um, the, there is an unrestricted use of the moment, so they have a right to use it in any way they wish at the moment, as it's, it's, which is not unusual in non-traditional industrial buildings, that's very normal. There may be disturbance to industrial buildings, but 
people tend not to go to work at five in the morning. I know it can happen, but it, uh, generally speaking, a lot of industrial buildings, you know, they have standard hours, normally eight or you know, six at night. Um, I think it would be unreasonable for us to impose that in this particular case because it is such a small extension. The redevelopment of the site, doing something different, creating significant extra traffic journeys, then yes, I think we could maybe do that, but in this circumstance, it's so marginal that we could do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There was a discussion here, there was a discussion point over the respective families and children and the use of, of, of the road or, or the, the area around, around the site. My concern really is in relation to that is whether health and safety is actually being preserved in respect of looking, looking at this particular uh, proposal. Um, so in terms of yeah, safety, um, this issue was looked at a lot in the, in the appeal decision, um, but that obviously was for a different, a different development with a 20 percent flat, so it would be different types of people, people coming to and from from the, from the site. Um, but this one we're looking at, they've got two, two access points. Um, the appeal decision doesn't, doesn't indicate that the, they can't use this access here, which they have ownership over. Um, the proposal still, the, the site is gated here, and here, so they, those are being retained as part of the scheme. Um, so that, that does help control um, um, vehicle movement. Um, so in terms of safety, I was also looking at that, and given the likely increase um, when one additional vehicle within the peak out period, um, it's not considered a very, very concerned in that respect. Can I ask a question about the planning history? Because it says it's relevant, and that's the 18, um, 10 to 18 application for the um, self contained flats, um, which says yet to be determined. Is that the same applicant? Um, yes. So, what does yet to be determined mean? That's still pending uh, under assessment of the officers. So, that's still, that's still with us um, under assessment. And is there a recommendation for that? Uh, no, there's not. No. Either extend the warehouse building or build residential accommodation. Uh, they don't have permission for um, any residential, residential accommodation on the site. At the moment, no, I'm just yeah. saying, I'm speaking to but it, yeah, okay, it's a contrast then. Are there any other questions? Councillor Sanders. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, that's helpful. So I think we established this is just a, a stopgap measure, really, isn't it? A 15% increase in the existing um, floor space, which would sound obvious, but um, the scheme set up in consideration is, is trimmed down by just two flats from the previously refused scheme. My, Concern more is with the exit onto to Dawlish Avenue, which is long and extremely narrow. Um, can I just check that there is sufficient room for a um, you know, to, to execute a three-point turn so that vehicles could both enter and exit onto Wellington Avenue? I'm not saying we could impose this, but that really would be the the, the preferable outcome, I think, rather than inflicting additional traffic onto door shopping. So, Chair, so the, this plan here is taken from the Transport State, which is a vehicle tracking plan. Um, so that shows an 8 metres long lorry coming in, turning and, and leaving um, from both entrances, yeah. and also a car as well. Um, they do have access through both Areas. So our advice um, is to not impose any um, condition restricting access this way, um, as that is that is a lawful access.
space being developed for uh, a further application which has nothing to do with uh, industry. And um, once you get the outline planning for a certain bulk, then it makes the next application far easier because not only have offices agree that the councils have two, and that's a double whammy. And um, I cannot see why uh, we should exercise our right to allow something that won't work here by agreeing to something that might. So I, I think that we have to um, say no to this on the basis that they don't seem to have a plan uh, to reincarnate industry on this site and uh, what they're offering. Um, actually, I don't think any industry should have had on this site looking at the size of the lane. Uh, it is far too narrow. And nothing should have been built on there, but maybe it was before planning existed. But I think we need to reject this because the objectives don't fit the strategy in my opinion. I don't think that's a planning opinion. Any other comments? Do we have um, a recommendation? I think reject it on dangerous access. Is that planning? Again, um, no, it's a potential. I'm not saying officers. I'm not convinced. Potential is a very strong word. Yes, I mean, in terms of the, as, a, as a reason for refusal, in terms of danger and hiring, mean, yes, there is a potential to refuse an application on that. Obviously, officers aren't recommending that in this case. It's an existing access, but um, it's a, if, if members wish to refuse it on a particular basis, um, all I'd say is there's, it's, it's existing. They can use it for that purpose now anyway, so in terms of defending that, but my view on the defence is I don't buy the one extra movement a day. I accept what you said is that they've got 12 lorries turn up, put the raw materials in, but I don't buy it. And one of the reasons this is empty is because I think it's a difficult site, and therefore it leads to the next cause, which is, well, maybe we'll make it a different site. So I think there is a real issue here, and optimistically, that's where we should be going. Just make another point. Just so members are aware, obviously, in terms of the previous appeal decision, I mean, if, if we had an inspector's decision saying, you know, this is a dangerous access, you shouldn't be able to refuse on that particular basis, then, you know, saying yes. I mean, we, we fought this appeal very hard at the time, put a lot of resource into the uh, residential mm -hmm. appeal. In this particular case, the inspector didn't say specifically, you know, this shouldn't be an access to that particular site. Well, that's not going to be correct here, but I'm pretty sure he didn't or she didn't. Yeah. So it's, it's, an existing, it's an existing access. Just wanted to know, are, are cars currently going through Dorbyshire Cathedral, or is it just through events in Europe? My understanding is they don't access through that. The one that was at the large gate, last time I was there, I walked around the site a few times, and there was a, a gate there. Can they use their current access rather than through Dorbyshire Well, I think if I was the operator there, I'd be you know, looking at Dorbyshire Avenue access in compared to the one that's wrong, I think we'd be going on into rural Dorbyshire Avenue, could have all kinds of residential cars. Access in, I think I think I'd be using that myself, but it's an existing access. One thing you did win the appeal. It was rejected. That's the case. Yeah, just to be clear about that, you didn't lose the appeal. You did work with my workers and you did win it. And therefore it was rejected. I don't see why we should be concerned about an appeal if you've already fought them on one. Well the only point I make is it wasn't the appeal wasn't Right. Dismiss on that specific basis that you're looking to refuse on that. Okay. Do we have a second there? <laughs> okay, so this is on hazardous exit. Yeah. So we have the second one. I was just going to say that we heard from an objector on policy grounds around reducing impact of commercial use on residential roads. Is that anything that we could add to this, given that it extends over to Dawlish? Well, it's an industrial site historically. Um, designated, I believe, in some form. Scattered, scattered, scattered. So it has an established use. Um, it's obviously something we would look at. Or if, this, if they were putting another five stories on the top and generating five tons of traffic, I think that's exactly what we would and potentially refusing on that basis, but that's not what we're looking at here. Okay, 
we do have an access point that's not been accessed because it's got a gate. It could be accessed now because of this planning application that we're good in it. That's where we are. And like, can we put your hand Sorry, just, it's got a gate there that can be accessed. There's a gate there, but I mean, I don't think they've been using it, but they could use it. That's me. Could we put the additional link to stop well, it's not something that's been offered up by the applicant. Um, it's an established use, so we can't really put conditions on such a minor matter. If there was a redevelopment on the side, we might be able to talk about such issues, but very difficult when it's such a, a small extension to an existing local use. Okay. We've got a recommendation to refuse on the ground of the hazardous exit. Let's see those in favour, please. Sure. Those against. Not voting. That's refused. And that's turned down. So we're now voting on the overall application. Those in favour of the overall application recommendation, please share. This is ridiculous. <laughs> You've got your hand up, and I'm thinking you're a member of the committee there, Sarah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, let me do this again. Those in favour of the recommendation to grant permission, please show. One. Those against. We have to have a reason. Six. Well, the motion to refuse has just been lost. That's what I'm trying to say. If you supported this, we would have been okay then. Well, we're going to get the same reason. It is going to be the same reason, isn't it? Right? Yeah, it is, so, isn't let's it? Let's move on then. Can I just sort of say as well, in terms of procedure, you've already voted against yeah. refusal, yeah. which is the same reason, so we've got a contradictory situation here. Yeah. I think it needs clarifying in some fashion. Dr. Ross is an inverse of the chair. Apparently, people have the right to change their mind. Okay, let's start again. On the recommendation that we turn it down on hazardous exit, those in favour? So we are now on to the road. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. The application site located on the east side of Durham Road. Within Rains Park Hall area. The site comprises two story building with a retail shop at ground floor, associated storage from office at of the rear, and a flat at the first floor level. The proposal itself is for demolition of the existing storage from office at the rear and replacement of a two story, uh, a two bed dwelling. 
extension to existing building at the front to create one bed ground floor residential dwelling and two bed dwelling at first floor level. The existing shop front will be retained in the of the new sporting frame at the front. Uh, the two ground floor dwellings will have access to outdoor community space. Uh, talking you through the plans, um, this is just a review of this sort of site, this current form, which is here. Um, so the ground floor level, the current there's a shop um, which opens out into the front. Um, at the back there is some associated storage um, and ancillary facilities. Um, to that unit. First floor level, um, there is an existing flat. So existing elevations, the site is this, this here, here, that's the existing front. Uh, existing side, so this traditional building with a hip roof coming back, um, with some ancillary outbuildings at the back here. Uh, proposal itself, um, does include a park basement in the new building at the back of the site. Um, proposed ground floor plan, so at the back, a flat roofed design building is proposed, which would incorporate a two bed dwelling. At ground floor level, a new one bedroom flat would be created. Um, the hash area is where the, an extension is coming up as well to help accommodate it. And the shop front is having a new. Um, structural frames around here at the front of the shop remaining in its existing use. At the first floor level, there's a side extension coming across here, and this would become a two bedroom flat. And you'll see at the first floor level the flat roof of the existing uh, proposed building at the back of the site. Uh, the proposal also includes making use of the existing uh, picture of that building, which you'll see in my side pictures. The extension to the rear of the property is this bit here, which is a flat roof, first floor extension. So proposed plans, proposed to infill the gap above, the gap between the two dwellings here. That's a section through, so you can see that bit here. Extension out here, and then this is the new building at the back. Again, a section just showing it through. Proposed front. Um, this is the view at the rear, so new windows here, doors opening into the outdoor space at ground floor level. Um, this is the view, so existing is at the top, proposed villa at the bottom. Um, the view is largely from the neighbouring gardens at the back, so the existing building, is, some of it's been lost, but the bridge height is remaining the same. Um, this is the type of um, flat roof lanterns that are proposed within the scheme to serve the um, building at the back. Um, and that's just a section plan showing the outline of the, the main building, which is to the left as you look at the, the building. So looking at the property itself, um, so proposing to have a setback extension filling this gap here above at first floor level. Uh, looking down the side of the building, so there's already side access there. At the back here, so part of this building is to be lost, but this would be retained and then a new building being developed over here. So these ancillary outbuildings will be lost as part of the scheme. That's just looking next door at the back, looking at what they have. Um, this is the application site here, so the first floor extension coming out here, and what the main property you can just see on the right. Um, this is a view the case officer visited um, neighbouring gardens at the back as part of the assessment. Um, this actually resulted in a member plan that's being received um, by the applicant, as they originally were proposing a two-storey section above, uh, which now they are not. So that has been amended. And so this outbuilding, the roof would be, this would be partly removed, and then the flat roof building extending along. Um, that was done by the applicants, obviously following my advice to help reduce the impact on the names of the back. So Chair, overall, um, the proposal would use, make good use of a ground floor site with a net gain of two residential dwellings. Although the site is small in scale, it's considered that a good balance has been struck between the size of the units and the outdoor space provision. The application has been amended, removing a first floor by the rear of the site, following officers' concerns regarding the community. Officers have recommended recommend, recommend, granted. Thank you. Thanks. We have no speakers for this, so just straight into questions, please. Any questions? It's me. Comments. 
Unbelievable. Okay, so in that case then, do we agree the recommendation? Those in favour, please show. Any against? Not voting? I think. Then the recommendation is agreed. Uh, we have the planning and build decisions report to note. And can we, are we okay with that? And the planning enforcement, can I just say that I have discussed with um, Neil Morgan uh, the need to look at a review of the enforcement cases because frequently they appear with the same wording and I'm just a bit anxious um, that there is movement here. So um, there is going to be um, a discussion between now and the next planning meeting about that, just to make sure things really are moving on. Does anyone have any comments they want to raise on the enforcement report? I would like to support what you just said. Thank you. Um, in which case, then the meeting is over. Thank you very much. The next meeting, which should be in May, is cancelled because of the European election um, date that's in the diary. So our next meeting will be in June. Thank you for your attendance.